Hi, and good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Rick Nabb, director here at the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. It is June 1. It is the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season. I'm out here in hurricane operations where our hurricane specialists operate, and they've been on shift for a while now. The routine operational shifts began on May the 15th when the eastern North Pacific hurricane season got going. As we've seen also, the Atlantic hasn't been completely devoid of activity. We've already had Alex and Bonnie preseason systems, but as a reminder, preseason and early season activity don't tell us a whole lot about what the peak of the hurricane season might be like. But I wanted to share with you what we do out here in hurricane operations, and again, the hurricane specials are already on shift, and let's swing across this way. This is one of the operational desks. This is where we usually would write the advisories for the most prominent Atlantic tropical cyclone that's out there, and this is hurricane specialist uh, Dr. Jack Bevan who, just like me, happened to go to Florida State University. Jack, good morning. Good. I haven't been in town for a while. I've been on, on, on the awareness tours, and it's good to be back here at home in South Florida and at the Hurricane Center. But, Jack, we're watching still what is left of Bonnie. That's correct. The, what's called post-tropical cyclone. Is advisories are being issued by the Weather Prediction Center. We are watching it. I'm just running guidance on this to get some better idea of where it's going to go. The low pressure area that was formerly Bonnie is now back out over the water. It's moving parallel to the coast. We'll probably pass south of the, of the Cape Hatteras area sometime tomorrow and go out to sea. There is still some chance it could come back, uh, the occasional flare-ups of showers and thunderstorms near the center, but there is nothing yet that suggests it's, that it's going to redevelop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm. In addition to this, we are also watching a disturbance in the Pacific that does have a high potential over the next several days to develop into a tropical cyclone. And then there's a possibility of a, a, another system or two in the Atlantic that are, do, don't exist yet, but our computer models are suggesting at least some possibility something will happen, including it with Western Caribbean, which would be the normal generating area at this time of year. Yeah, things can happen close to home early in the hurricane season. Now, one of our most important products to get across some of the things you just been talking about is our tropical weather outlook. We have the five-day graphical outlook in both the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific basins. Talk about what you look at as we're putting together the five-day outlook product. Well, the five-day outlook product, first thing we look at is see just what systems we have existing. And at the moment, the Bonnie is the one existing system that we have. Then we are looking at the various computer models, including the GFS model run by the National Weather Service and the European Center model, and seeing what is forecast to develop during the next five days or so. And what they are forecasting for the Western Caribbean is some unsettled weather or on a large scale over Central America. And then when we get that, there's a chance that we will have some sort of tropical cyclone. Now there's not agreement on the details yet because the models are quite spread in the location of any potential tropical cyclone, which is why right at the moment I've not put this in the outlook, but it's certainly something we are, we are seeing in the models and watching for possible later inclusion, possibly as early as later today, depending on what the next set of model runs show. What, it, what is clear is that we'll have some unsettled weather down in the Western Caribbean and Central America starting over the weekend, and if that happens, we'll have to watch that for the potential of something developing there. And that's not abnormal for this time of year. Actually, that's kind of the uh, rule this time of year rather than the exception. Yeah, the, the Western Caribbean, the warmer waters down there, and uh, the, the way the atmosphere tends to set up early in the season uh, on both sides of Central America. Uh, so we've had many uh, June systems that originate you know, close to home, and then they tend to want to come north. That's uh, when they do form in that area. And that several of the models are hinting that if something does form near Yucatan or the northwestern Caribbean, it'll move into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, which part of the Gulf of Mexico is still a little nebulous? That's where some of the spread is occurring. One of the models has it in the western Gulf of Mexico going towards Mexico. Several others would bring it up more to the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And at this stage of the game, five days out, it, we can't really pin down the details of that very well. So. And that's why the Tropical Weather Outlook product is so important, because that's when we uh, can put something in that product that conveys to you the chances of it forming within the next five days and where that formation could occur. And when that outlook is empty, uh, it's pretty far in advance, not time to uh, be worried too much about it. But again, uh, early season activity can form. Uh, in the Western Caribbean, and uh, we are continuing to monitor the Eastern Pacific, which uh, gets active uh, even earlier than the Atlantic, typically. So what happens here when we have a significant hurricane threat to any land areas? Let's say, for example, we've got a tropical cyclone in the Caribbean, 
and we have some of our international partners who are threatened. We're coordinating watches and warnings with them, and the U.S. is also threatened. How is it that we're able to put together all those advisories, do all that coordination, and get the advisory out in time? Well, several steps in the process, and the first step is to gather all the data from satellite, radar, uh, aircraft, and the like. Which continuous process, but uh, we we really concentrate on the first uh, half hour, 45 minutes of the advisory process. That tells us where the storm is, how big it is, how strong it is, and which way it's going. Then we will trigger off our various computer models. I mentioned some of them when we talked about the Genesis, but they also work very well for the active cyclones. And we'll get these plots back of the various models. And actually, I've got one I was just bringing up right here for former Bonnie, which is going to go out to sea according to the vast majority of our guidance. And I will take this and my fellow specialists will take this and we will use it to uh, make our forecast of the track of where the storm is going. And we'll just sit here and do all the forecasting around this computer. We have similar guidance for the intensity and the size of the storm. And what I do as a hurricane specialist is to take this guidance and a lot of times it doesn't agree as well as this particular suite is, it can be quite conflicting, and turn it into the forecast that goes out in our advisory products. And then we will coordinate not only with our international partners, but with the National Weather Service as well, a variety of ways of coordination, some of which are internal inside the NWS, some of which are commercial telephone and let everybody know what we're planning to do, get the appropriate watches and warnings up, and then finish up the advisory and get it out on the street. And that is the compressed version of what it takes two and a half hours for us to do, <laughs> or longer when things get very busy around here. Right, so, and, and I, I had previously been a hurricane specialist uh, during the 2005 to 2008 hurricane seasons here, and uh, it really is a lot of information that the hurricane specials have at their disposal. The key is to know what information to look at and to make some decisions in a fairly short period of time. And the, uh, the NAWIPS display here is critical because it allows us to overlay in space and time satellite and, and conventional observations. And this is uh, an infrared satellite loop with some of the uh, conventional uh, surface and, and marine observations. Uh, we also have the ability to look at uh, coastal radar, the post-tropical cyclone Bonnie is, is within radar range of the uh, Carolina coast. And then what Jack was showing you earlier with all of the model tracks on it, this is where the advisory is actually composed and this is what's called the ATCF, the Automated Tropical Cyclone Forecast System, but I can assure you it is not completely automated. There's a lot that the specialist has to do. And also on, on our other NAOP screens, this is where we look at the details of the computer forecast models. Those tracks are just a simplistic view of where each model is forecasting in the center of the system to go, but there's a lot to digest in terms of what the models are doing in terms of the structure of the cyclone. So this is hurricane operations. This is where we sometimes not only deal with one cyclone, but could be dealing with multiple cyclones at any given time. And then right here is our media desk where I and a few others might do some media interviews when there's a hurricane threat to the US. We're immediately adjacent to operations and talking directly to our media partners in our media room. And by the way, this room has been busy much of the off season. This is where we conduct a number of training courses and conferences. We've been busy during the last several months getting ready for today, getting ready for the start of the hurricane season. And not just on a professional level, we've been doing it on a very personal level too. I've been getting myself, my family, my home ready by updating my insurance and checking my shutters and buying my supplies, making sure family and friends who live in an evacuation zone have a plan to get out. So hopefully you are doing the same thing, getting ready for the next hurricane. Thanks for joining us here on Periscope on NWS NHC. Have a safe hurricane season. Check our tropical weather outlook throughout the season at hurricanes.gov.